Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Adam Balderstone, and we're talking about Babylon 5, Season 5, Episodes 11 through 13. That's Phoenix Rising, The Ragged Edge, and The Core is Mother, The Core is Father. So these uh, first two episodes are sort of part of a link story. The second one kind of takes things in a different direction, but I would say they're all thematically connected, wouldn't you, Adam? Uh, that these are, they're all yeah. related to telepath stuff in a way there well let's see how i'm not sure how much telepath stuff there is in the ragged edge is there i mean it's it's fallout from the previous episode though so yeah that it's it, it's a conti- I, I guess i was thinking of the garibaldi storyline still being a continuation yeah. of that but yeah you're yeah. right it's 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 uh it's also its own thing so um but why don't why don't you get us uh in on the first episode and we can uh we can we can sort of begin Okay, so yeah, the first one is well, Phoenix Rising. It's uh, it brings an end to the whole Byron telepath plot line for the most part. With uh, I know you know obviously the, there's continuation to a degree, but it's kind of the climax of his story, and uh, you know it it opens with with Sheridan trying to kind of start a dialogue with them and uh, Bester sabotaging it and uh, that's probably pretty much the running theme of the episode is them trying to find a peaceful solution and bester doing his best to make sure that things don't work out and uh although i think i i i don't know how honest he's being but it seems things work out more poorly than he anticipated but we'll see but uh yeah and of course there's also garibaldi in this is trying to uh deal with uh the fact that he can't hurt Bester because they, that's been implanted in his brain. So uh, why, why did you think of this one? So, well, I thought it was okay. It wasn't as great as I was hoping for for this episode. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad, but it, it had it had some issues that I, I, I sort of kind of questioned. I, I actually thought the next two episodes were way better. Like, I actually yeah. really liked those episodes a lot. And this episode, it was fine, it, but it was a little disappointing I, I preferred the storyline with Garibaldi and Bester to the stuff that was going on by the end with the um, with the standoff and, and the yeah. med lab. Uh, part of that is because we knew it was coming anyways. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's sort of like it was. It's sort of like when you see a preview for a movie and there's like a really cool scene and you're waiting the whole time for that scene to come and it doesn't quite pan out how you imagined it. And so <laughs> some of it's your own fault for bringing stuff in. Some of it's you know, but but I I feel like. Some of the issues I had with the standoff, I didn't buy that Byron would just do that, what he did at the end. I yeah. thought I thought that was like a betrayal of the character they had established, like in a big way. Like that to me, um, it really just did it. Not, not that I would have minded it if that's what the character had been leaning towards, but I just didn't get any sense of that he was going to just, you know, explode all of his people like that. That was a – and I know he well, did Not it, all his people. No. But That's the, just the ones that were the violent faction, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but I don't know. I, it just didn't, it did. It still didn't. didn't he, seem convincing. He, he's all about persuading. He, he sort of seems to believe in the power of redemption. Right. And so, you know, that's why he's nonviolent. He thinks he can, he can change the world through his, his, his you know, uh, by, by uh, encouraging people to feel sympathetic to his people. And, yeah. and he's, and he's changed his people b- by the way he acts. And so I, I just, I don't know. I just, I just felt like that was a weird thing for his character to do, especially since, I mean, there were more dire moments than that. You know what I mean? He's been, he's been, yeah. he, he's fully capable of not suiciding in that situation. I, I, it just seemed like a very unmeasured, unreasonable response from a person who all we've seen of him is that he's, He's, you know, you can walk up to him and you can attack him and he will turn the other cheek. He's basically a Jesus-like figure. Um, I think a more yeah. fitting end for him, if they wanted to sort of have him go out in a blaze of glory, would be to have him go out in, like, you know, in some sort of crucif not not a literal crucifixion, but, you know, have him become the Jesus figure, if that's what they want. But this was, this sort of turned him into a suicide bomber to me. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't quite like the way well, it went. Yeah, I mean, it was a little different than a suicide bomber in the sense that he wasn't killing random people. He took himself out and the other people that were the 
little violent faction. They kind of gathered around him. They clearly he's, knew what was going suicide on. Suicide bomber is so. the wrong word, but a martyr. He becomes like a martyr yeah. in the sense of, uh, and and it's not, uh, but it's but he's also he's got blood on his hands. It's not like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's the part that I, I I don't know. Yeah, no, I wasn't comfortable with it. I mean, you know, I to bring up. You know, one thing that this this plot line is one of the least popular plot lines in the series with a lot of fans. And and, it, you know, having not seen the show in 15 years, I was enjoying it a lot more than I anticipated up to this point. I'm like, wow, you know, I, you know, taking Byron is this complex character and so on. I get why people don't like him, but I'm interested in what's happening. But it, they just don't stick the landing right. And I mean. I think part of the problem too is having having Lockley and Sheridan there going, no, we can still work this out. Everything is fine. There's no reason for him to do it. You know, it's like if there was in a situation where they were not visible and he really believed, oh, they're you know they're just going to turn us over to Psychor. But you know, they, you know, they, they were. Psychor had no power in that situation other than Bester just being there. No, and Bester even said, I'm like, I'm in, like, I, I'm contesting. Like, it was clear that he was going against what they, if he had come yeah. in and said, thank you, Sheridan, for bringing them into my trap, like, that would have been a more believable yeah. way to have the outcome that they wanted. And the, but also just the, I don't know, it just felt weird. Like, like there was some kind of weird chemical spill and, I didn't understand what the chemical was, and then it was gone when Lita walked across. There were just like weird things that seemed to be like really important plot points that sort of evaporated. Um, and well, again, no, I think the chemical spill was what he, he kind of shocked the chemical spill to blow himself up, is what he did. No, but then when, um, remember how Lita walks, she walks across, and there's like no, like I thought there was like this big puddle. Blocking. Oh, the pedal disappeared. Yeah. I missed the pedal yeah. disappeared. I, I might be. So. I might have misunderstood what was happening, but but I guess my feeling was I didn't see by like I could have seen other characters doing what he did. I just didn't mm-hmm. see him doing that. That was the thing that bothered me. Like if another character decided to, you know, had decided, okay, my people are too violent. We need to, you know, like we all need to go for some purpose. Like I could sort of, I could sort of see it, but yeah, I, I, I just. That wasn't his. That wasn't what they established about him at all. So it just felt like a weird. And, and then, and then, like you said, like all the stuff that sort of boxed him in. Those weren't things that would have normally boxed him in in the path. He was always, before he was always about. Oh no, there's a there's another way. There's another way. Like okay, you've you've gone down this path, but we can you know we can still seek you know another you know no a better solution than 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 bloodshed. And so I don't know. I just he does like. I guess what they were having him do is they were kind of having him sort of take responsibility for the, the murderers that he felt he had created. You know what I mean? Like that seemed to be what they were striving for there. But I, I don't, I don't think that's how he operates. I think. Uh, yeah. And I mean, and it, it obviously it clearly doesn't work anyway, because you know, the, the episode ends with Garibaldi when he has his drink, you know, it's, he's listening to some broadcast about how people are, blowing up psychor offices in byron's name so you know it's it it's you know it wasn't a believable thing for him to do and it uh yeah it just it doesn't achieve the result he wanted so it just i don't know it yeah i mean maybe they could have gotten the character to that point if they spent more time with him but they didn't they didn't earn that ending it, I mean, it didn't work i felt like there were flashes of an intensity to him that i that that they that they could have taken to, to 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 justify this, but they never really did anything with those flashes. There was never any moment where we saw him like punch somebody or do something that seemed like an like a violent or an impulsive action. And so, yeah, I, I just I just didn't get it from him. But the Garibaldi stuff I liked. I liked the Garibaldi stuff where yeah. he went to go. He basically went to go uh, force Bester to make a confession and record it. And held them at gunpoint. I don't know what the device is. It's some kind of firearm they have in the future. And Bester acts at first like he's scared. Then he just says, "No, I'm not going to do that." And he sits down and pours himself a drink. And he uh, and he and I think he pours one for Garibaldi too. <laughs> and I don't remember if Garibaldi drank it in that moment though. But I don't uh, think he did. Uh, no. And uh, and then uh, and then he tells them like, "I'm not stupid. I you know I knew that something like this was going to happen. So I obviously may- took." you know, 
uh, uh, measures to make sure it doesn't. And he, and, he, and he pretty much planted something at like the root of one of his synapses that won't let him... Uh, won't let him harm it's it, and it was cool because he invoked asimov's laws of robotics so like so so you know so basically he cannot either through direct or you know indirect action or inaction cause bester to come to harm and so it's uh it, it, and and that, and this just sends garibaldi into a, a spiral where he, he ultimately starts drinking again um, yeah now, how did you feel about the return of Garibaldi's drinking? Because I know we had talked about that possibility a while ago. <laughs> um, uh, it was better than than uh, the possibility of Franklin going back to Stims. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I you know, once again, I, I'm really rusty on this season, so a lot of this is kind of fresh to me again because it's been so long. And so part of me was kind of concerned when he had that drink, but. When when Garibaldi, you know, with with Franklin and his stims, it's like that that plot line it just feels more, you know, uh, afternoon specialish, you know, yeah. whenever he that happens and that doesn't interest me. Whereas when Garibaldi, whenever he's gotten drunk, he's entered like this noir world, yeah. you know, which he will in the next episode. That's like, and I like noir, so yeah. it's. Yep. It's it's a little cliche, but it generally leads somewhere interesting well, when he does it. Here's how I feel. I feel like he is it, it, there's the noir element, which I agree with you 100 percent. I like, but I also feel like when he gets when he drinks, he feels like a real drinker. He doesn't feel like a char- <laughs> like like Franklin doesn't come across as like a drug addict. Do you know what I mean dr- Franklin's a exactly. responsible person? He's he's somebody like you have to really stretch that character. And and they chose the right drug for him. Like stims are probably the one thing you could sort of see him abusing. Yeah. But it doesn't. He doesn't have that dark edge to his character that you that sort of fits with Garibaldi. And so when Garibaldi gets drunk, you you're afraid of him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and so when when Franklin gets on stuff, you're just like, what's going on with Franklin? So it's a it's a it's a totally different emotion. And and I I feel like it works with Garibaldi. What I, what I will say though is I like how they've tied those threads together and how the Garibaldi and Franklin yeah. uh, relationship have become important. And and that's obviously at work here. And so, you know, and, they, and 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 it's and it's interesting that, you know, Garibaldi was the one who pulled Franklin originally. You know, he was the one who, who, who you know, tried to say, hey, look, I know what you're going through and, you know, invited him over for a dinner and, and, and tried to talk him out of abusing the uh, the stims. And so yeah. I think, you know, now the tables have turned a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's why Garibaldi's so reluctant to have Franklin around. It's like he he is because he knows Franklin is the guy he can turn to. <laughs> it's like yeah. Franklin is the guy, and he doesn't he doesn't want the help, so he's really pushing Franklin away at the moment. But I will also say that does it feels like a really realistic way of handling drug addiction and drug abuse because in a lot of shows yeah. they'll kind of do what they did with Franklin, where you get the walkabout and then like he's like all. Oh, you know, it's all fine after that. Like, it's a happy ending. Yeah. And the Garibaldi line feels like more like what I've seen in real life from people. Where, yeah. like, when they're clean and when things are good, you know, they're, they're fine. And, and there's, like, they, 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 they look like a person redeemed. But at any given moment, they could go back to what to that. Do you know what I mean? And that and yeah. so, and you see that with Garibaldi. And, and it's believable. So I, 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 uh, I, I think that it's, I think that storyline worked. And, uh. I don't know. We should probably move on to the next episode because I think that's... Uh, well, we're already pretty much yeah. in there, aren't we? The um, ragged edge. <laughs> I like this episode a lot. I really enjoyed this one, largely for the atmosphere and the sense of a world. that It, it had a Blade Runner, you know, like a noirish science fiction type vibe. Yeah. To it. You know, Caves of Steel, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just really liked it. Um, you know, even, even Tafik. Tafik's character was a little bit... Uh, pulled out of like an indiana jones movie but like it was I mean? good yeah yeah uh, yeah I, I i like tafik uh yeah it's it, it's a very very solid it has a very solid feel to it i mean it's one of those it's one of those episodes where you know they're working with a limited budget but they really do a lot with the budget in this episode i think it it it, it yeah it felt like this this uh dangerous you know uh you know environment that he'd got into and uh it worked for it and uh yeah i i I think it worked well the uh and you know garibaldi 
just just blowing it the whole the whole thing. I just the way it unraveled there there felt 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 realistic to me and uh, him just letting it, it being such an important matter too. You know, I mean, here it was. It's because I that's the other thing we haven't talked about actually in this episode. This episode starts with the uh, with the fact that. Uh, the, the alliance is pretty much all the member nations are like, hey, we're not going to do anything until you clean up this situation. So Garibaldi's mission is absolutely crucial, you know, yeah. and uh, and he still still completely blows it. <laughs> no, it was it was a frustrating episode to watch for that reason, because you're like, don't blow this mission. Don't blow this mission. And uh, yeah. but I also like and I, th- I think it was this episode where they 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 they, they realize that um uh, the, so basically, he has to go and, and get a, uh, meet a contact there who saw something that's going to give them information about well, who's launching these attacks. Mm-hmm. And the people that it, that ultimately end up killing the guy that he's supposed to meet with turn out not even to be Drazi, which is what you would have assumed they were going to be when 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 they first when when the episode first kind of started rolling. And it, it you know Garibaldi gets a, a badge or a button from one of their coats and. They're having that meeting that they have with the group, and Londo comes in and recognizes the the emblem on it from the uh, mm-hmm. the Centauri guard or something, and they realize that Londo is like an un he's a leak, but he doesn't know he's a leak, and yeah. so and so they make a I don't know what this decision's gonna do, but they make a really critical decision like okay do we do we like inform Londo or do we keep him in the dark on this what do we do. And they decide to basically keep Londo in the dark because they think he's un- they don't think he's intentionally doing these things. They just think he's you know unintentionally doing it. And it's it's Jakar's choice because Jakar feels like if they tell Londo that Londo is going to try to get to the bottom of it and it'll result in Londo dying. And oh, go yeah, ahead. no, I, I say I I really like that decision there because it's like if it was just okay, we can't tell Londo anything. That would have. Now, if it would have felt a little cheap, like that cheap shot where characters just don't tell each other things to yeah. make things more complicated, of being like, no, you know, Londo is, you know, he's not going to put up with this, and that that was that was believable that he would do that, and uh, so it, it it made it a more compelling reason to make what may be a dangerous choice. <laughs> and you know, and you can just sense where this choice might take things. You you know that Londo won't take it well if he finds out he's you know been in the dark. Yeah. You also know that it might it might be better for Londo to die. Like it might be a more satisfying conclusion to have him die a hero trying to get to the bottom of it than yeah, go the direction true. we know he's gonna go. Um, that's true. So uh, so it, it, it I don't know it was, a, it was a it was an interesting moment and I thought it was very cool that they had Jakar make that choice. And we also got the stuff this episode with the book of Jakar, which is a whole other thing. Um, yes, I, I enjoyed it. I I was warned about it by a friend. I have a friend who's a fan of the show, and he was talking with me about it. And he and he, I think he was, I think he thought I might find it silly, so he sort of p- prepared me for it. And I don't know if that helped when I actually got to it or not. But I actually really liked the book of Jakar uh, storyline. So I don't know. You, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the storyline. I I didn't realize people thought it was something bad that people needed to be prepared for. But uh, well, it might have just yeah. been his thought. I mean, you know. It, oh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I was saying, you know, it's just fine. I mean, people have different opinions, but uh, yeah, I I it's one of those things. Like, oh, I didn't know people did think that. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, you know, I mean, it's it's very believable to me because Jakar, I think we were talking about last episode, is a guy who can really sell a speech. He's a yeah. very persuasive, involving character, and uh, so him him becoming this kind of prophet figure, it it just makes sense, well, and, and him being him being kind of irritated by it kind of makes sense too. <laughs> well, and I like that they took a lighter hand on it. They could have gone too serious with the book. They could have made it very sort of ah, oh, the book of Jakar. And, yeah, and and I think that that might have had a different effect on me. But the because they did it with a with a lighter hand and there was room for humor and he was kind of surprised and you know they had stolen the book from his quarters because they thought he wasn't going to come back and then they printed some and then they printed some more and it turns <laughs> out there's like been like 700,000 copies printed at this point and it's going to outsell the book of uh of Jaquan uh 
you know, it's a it, it's 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 appropriate for the character. It feels like a nice thing to give him before we know he and Londo are going to go down this dark road. So it's sort of a a nice uh, a, a, a nice a nice thing to sort of have uh, Jakar uh, add to the setting before that. And uh, uh, but I also just sort of liked watching him in, interact with his followers. And I can't remember the guy's name, but the warrior guy. Um, the, the oh, it's uh, Talon. Talon. The uh, that that was a fun interaction. That was sort of a uh, yeah, you know, where they sort I of for- explained the significance of the book. Um, yeah, I forgot Talon came back at all this season, so I was like, oh, there's more Talon in the show. I always which, like it when Talon and Chikara hang out together. And again, I think that's an aspect <laughs> of the show that probably looks a little bit silly in retrospect now, but people don't understand how cool a katana wielding uh character was do you know what i mean like like yeah. it did not it did not it it, it it was it was not at all past its freshness date at, th- at this point to have like a you know it was sort of like the culmination of you know it was like it was like combining a klingon and a katana together would have been, you know what i mean that's sort of the yeah. the effect that it has um so uh but now it's obviously you know uh it, it's become something that people are overly familiar with and so it's it's sort of but but i think uh uh it was it was a nice scene and yeah and also his is his uh you know i liked that that talan said look i haven't actually read the book i'm not a spiritual guy like you, <laughs> I know. but i've seen how people react to it so i know it's important um you know that was that the, something about that 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 could the the i haven't read that book confession there was uh i don't know it it, it, it lended credibility to the scene um, it ground. Yeah, exactly. If it had been Talon going in there, I read your book and it changed my heart. And I, it would have been, it would have felt a little schmaltzier. But for, yeah, for him, to, for him to be kind of at a distance from the whole phenomenon would be like, look, this is a good thing. You need yeah. to you need to do this. Yeah, because he's kind of saying like, look, I I don't get what you're doing. Like, it's not my thing, <laughs> but I can see that the impact and, and that it's a direction we need to go. I can see that like we've been so focused on on fighting and war that we haven't, uh, you know, advanced ourselves to another stage that, that we probably need to for this new era. And, uh, it doesn't seem like he's intending to go there himself, but he can at least recognize that's where his people need to, need to, need to end up. And I don't know, it's, 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 it's kind of a cool, uh, very, you know, there's, it's a, it just provided for a very interesting moment and a nice conversation. Um, yeah, uh, it did. And, uh, but yeah, and I, I mean, one other, uh, you know, going back to the scene with Londo coming into their meeting too, it's like just, you know, the emotional impact of that scene too, is like Londo comes in in such a good mood and he's chipper and friendly. And it's like the scene opens and it's like, wow, it's this, it's kind of it's this this kind of exciting moment of like you know wow it's like now Wando and Jakar and Sheridan and Delenn can all sit around and they're all on the same side on the same team and just as that conversation goes forward that just that just crumbles you know yeah. it's like I mean, it's taken all these years to get to that point where those people can all just sit around and work together and and now it's it's just been undermined. <laughs> No, it's a very effect. It, 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 really, it really works, and uh, yeah. Um, and and again, I'm. Uh, I I liked the scene where Londo was contributing, where he was like, "Oh, I recognize that," but he had no idea the significance of it. And you know, it, I feel like this yeah. is exact. Like the moment that's that's where I would like to sort of freeze Londo in time, if I had my choice, and say, yeah, "That's the Londo that's... that I want." That's sort of the. That's kind exactly. of where we want. Him. Um, and so. Uh, so yeah, so I, 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 and again, I think, I think, I, I can't say enough about the atmosphere they built on. The, I forget the Drazi homeworld, but that planet was really well done, you know. In, and in terms of the overall series, it's one of the better, one of the better home planet scenes I feel that we've got. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, and they didn't go crazy with the effects. It's just that they they used them really well, um, you know, and they were able to create the atmosphere they wanted. So. Yeah, I, I like too the way uh, Garibaldi has his uh, 
you know, it's the way he knows the hooded people aren't drowsy. It's just like, no, it's what, when you hit him, it doesn't feel like that. You know, it's like, he, he knows, he knows different, the different alien species by how they feel the punch. You well, know, what was interesting too about that is, is now it really planted, like number one, you felt what he was saying. Like you really sort of had a visceral response to it where, okay, this, this, his race is like squishier and softer somehow. And, but also the drowsy are like, you know, they have like a, they must have like a, very firm bone structure or hard, hard skin or, you know, like they might like yeah. a rhino hide or, uh, you know, which the way that they look, it's easy. I can imagine that. So, uh, so it was, uh, I don't know, something about that line of dialogue really kind of, it worked in my imagination. Um, mm-hmm. and it added to, you know, you can see Garibaldi sort of, that's how he, it's, it's one way that he interfaces with the world is, is through punching. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just a nice little touch there. But uh, yeah, I, it is kind of interesting that you know that, and, and once again, you know, you know, he he blows the mission, but he brings back that button, which, you know, gives them a very incomplete piece of information as to what's going well, on. So and I, I was thinking about the whole him blowing the mission thing. I don't know that there's a whole lot that he would have been able like, like, yeah. I, like I know Sheridan was like, wait, you didn't hear the guy get shot outside, like, but I mean, like, really, like the. Like that's sort of an odd thing to expect Garibaldi to be able to detect, like, you know, somebody being shot in the dark at night with a because those things aren't that loud. Do you know what I mean? They're 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 yeah. So uh, yeah, that was a little a little off, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. Him blowing the mission, of course, he did get the uh, you know, his contact got killed over it, you know, which but that would have happened either way. That's that's you know, I don't know because how long was he unconscious? How long was the guy out there flashing his light? Because you know, Garibaldi was knocked out, you know. I mean, if Garibaldi had been awake, oh, maybe, oh, I maybe see that guy had been flashing his light for an hour, you know, maybe they would have been already on their way to the shuttle and getting off the planet I, by the I, time that guy showed up. I thought you were talking about his friend getting killed. Um, oh, no, 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 the uh, contact because okay. You know, because because the uh, well, I had the contact. His friend is the contact. Sorry, the so- information source, I should say, the uh, the uh, smuggler. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's not as an intelligence agency. You don't want to you don't want to build a habit of people knowing, hey, people that try and come to you with information are just going to be left out to dry and get murdered. Well, and not it's to mention he's a... the head of the intelligence agency, so you you know really yeah. Um, you know, and it's funny too, cause I think it was, it was the previous episode Sheridan was talking about how, uh, Garibaldi has been with Babylon five for five years, despite, and despite alcoholism has, you know, you yeah. know and, and so, uh, you know, it, it uh, you know, it, again, I, 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 I do think it would be unwise to put somebody like Garibaldi at the head of an intelligence agency not yeah. just for the alcoholism, but also because he betrayed the uh, he betrayed them at one point uh, in the uh, um, in the uh, uh, you know previous season. So yeah, well, we we well, the thing is we also know the uh, psychop still have stuff in his brain too. <laughs> and it's like he's not he's not entirely free of Bester's influence. I mean Bester is I don't to my knowledge Bester isn't making him do things. But just the fact he's got those blocks in there is not something you want in your head you know, as the head of your agency. And uh another issue too is I brought this up a long time ago in the show. I feel like being the head of an agency isn't his strong point like i said well you know i said well like you know when he was head of security it almost feels like he's the detective who's been put in the administrative job and he's a brilliant detective but you put him in as your head administrator and you're not playing to his strengths to a degree and you know and once again we get as the head of the head of intelligence his solution is i'm going to go out myself and i'm going to do this you know it's uh he he doesn't think that way yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. And I think, um, you know, just in the interest of time, we should probably move on to uh, the third episode, which is sure. um, uh, the core is mother, the core is father. And I don't know, I I really, really like this episode. I was I was surprised that I really, really liked it because I saw the description of it. and I was like, well, I like Bester, but I don't usually like when they depart from Babylon 5 and we have to sort of follow somebody else around and see something else from another point of view. Uh, yeah, you know my reactions to those episodes have generally been either fair, I think lukewarm, 
uh, negative, and like one or two times where I've been pleasantly surprised, but still a little on the fence about the episode. And so this one, I was fully on board with it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I was, I was almost like it was like the episode I didn't know I needed to have. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I don't know how people feel about this episode because I could see it going either way with folks, to be honest. But number one, uh, the Psycor is everything I imagined it to be. It was it was exactly what I was picturing in my head. We've been hearing about Psycor for so long, and then to finally sort of get to see what Psycor is, that's what I was imagining. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and also to get, to legitimately get it from Bester's point of view. Like, we got a little glimpse into him as a sympathetic character uh, two episodes ago, where at the end he clearly didn't expect things to pan out the way they did. Um, mm-hmm. and, he, and he looked shocked by the outcome. Um, you know, and again, like you said, they could have been acting, but I think it was, I think that was a genuine response on his part. Uh, in this episode, we, we don't just get to see his point of view. We get to see the Psychor's point of view and we get to yeah. see the point of view of all telepaths that, that are part of Psychor and, 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 and they don't really pull their punches. Like, and this is stuff, the thing that's funny about this is this, the stuff like they sort of highlight some of the prejudices that the telepaths experience from the people yeah. of Babylon 5. But this is not new stuff. This isn't like stuff they're inventing for this episode. We've seen the characters say these things. And it's yeah. just been, but you've been seeing it from their point of view. So you just didn't think anything of it. But mm-hmm. but now you sort of realize like, oh, like, like they're, they're pretty bigoted. Like, like it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, I mean, like, like it, uh, I forget what it was that Zach said, but it wasn't anything that we haven't seen Garibaldi or Sheridan say. Um, yeah, you know? well, it's. I mean, you know, having the interns along is what really makes it too, because they're these fresh-faced, enthusiastic young interns. You know, and it's like the look, the look on the girl's face when you know when they first show up, and it's like, oh, we're here because of you know he's murdered a psychop, and and Zach's like, oh, well, well, what's the problem? You know, and the look on the girl's face, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's it's. You know, it's it, it's like wow, it really kind of hits you that it's like you know what that what, what Zach, what are you what are you saying to this you know kid you know saying hey, psych a, a, a telepath got murdered, big deal you know. But, but that's the sort of thing he would have said in the company of Sheridan, yes. and you wouldn't have thought anything of it when he said it. That was what was so so great about that, and the and and then like later in the episode, the girl she sort of makes her bones by killing a mundane on the way home, and it is played up as sinister, but. At the same time, after all the stuff she's experienced on there and all sort of the, the way that the, the, the mundanes have treated them, I, mm-hmm. I can sort of see why she would be willing to do that. Like it does, it does, it's not, it doesn't take a giant leap to say, okay, this is, you know, like, it's sort of like what I've been saying with Bester the whole time, which is Bester is somebody, if they were just a little bit nicer to him, he wouldn't be so bad. Like, like if, like if in any of these episodes, Sheridan had just said, Hey, Bester, let's go get a cup of coffee. And, and, you know, just some kind of gesture so that they had some sort of human connection with each other. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't have been this ongoing dehumanization that just seems to be occurring, uh, between the telepaths and and the humans. And in this instance, Bester and, and and the the crew of Babylon five. And I think that, uh, I think that that, uh, the, the the intern the girl that we see who by the end basically becomes like Bester and just you know is is able yeah. to, to to throw a mundane into the space uh, if 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 she hadn't if she hadn't endured you know the comments from Zach the 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 general sense that you know telepaths are 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 not not fully human to them I don't think she would have gone there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's, I think, I think, I think, and I think that's the thing that they've been trying to do with Bester the whole time. I think that's why he's, he, you, I don't know. I've just always had this sense. If there was just a little bit of kindness thrown at him, he'd sort of reciprocate and it wouldn't, uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like whatever humanity, the telepaths have lost have been entirely, you know, not entirely, but they've largely been a result of the mundanes not trusting them, the mundane yeah. seeing them as disposable or a threat that needs to be eradicated. Um, so, so I don't know. What are your thoughts in general on, on the episode? 
Uh, yeah, I think I, 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 I wasn't sure about this episode when it started, too, because I was like, well, we just had Bester a couple of episodes. It seems weird. I, I, you know, I don't have the issue you do with changing the viewpoint and that kind of thing. I'm generally OK with that. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I was just from the standpoint of it seems, you know, it seems like too soon in the season to have Bester around again. But but it, it worked because it, it, you know, I mean, it kind of played off the, the events that just happened. It, everything was still fresh there, you know, so it, it, it worked for me. And the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, I, and I see, seeing things through that, that, uh, that, you know, through the interns, you know, perspective is what really worked. If it had just been Bester, I, you know, it wouldn't have felt as fresh to you. Well, to me, as I was uh, as I was watching it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I agree that Bester you could make Bester a better person at this point just by being nice to him. But I think what this episode showed is by the way you know by the way people like Zach are acting, they definitely made things worse. <laughs> well, I think at <laughs> this know? point in the story, he's sort of beyond redemption, barring some kind of extreme. Measure, yeah, you know what I mean, like him and Sheridan being locked in a tunnel together, and the sort of you know the the, the, <laughs> the thing that almost happened with Shakar and, and Londo. But but I yeah. think leading up to it, I think there have been a lot of moments where a little bit of kindness would have gone a very far, far yeah. away with him. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I just I just feel like that's part of the character. Like that's something I. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm saying I'm unsure. You know, I'm unsure, but I, I feel they've definitely definitely done everything they can to make it worse because yeah there because there, there are just through the whole series you know the, the main characters making really terrible comments about telepaths <laughs> and also all, all the stuff we see at Psycor is fairly normal it's not like a, i mean it's like a, i mean obviously there are weird things going on there because there's you know telepathy but you know they're 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 pretty much normal people um and yeah and and bester is like professor that everybody likes like yeah <laughs> you know bester's like very popular i i that's the one thing i wasn't expecting the one thing that i i, I figured oh he's probably equally unpopular at the psych you know he's probably this guy that people are afraid of and it was the complete opposite he walks around in a sweater most of the time um, <laughs> you know the girl the girl comes to his quarters and tries to seduce him and it's not it's not him being creepy to her he's not like trying to exploit this you know what i mean like that sort of i would have imagined yeah. it going the opposite but no this girl is legitimately attracted to him and he has to be like no look you know this you know don't be embarrassed but just go back to your quarters you know you didn't do anything wrong and he handles it in a way that was the most gracious way that a person could handle that situation it was he, he yeah. had he had surprisingly good social skills uh when dealing with the other telepaths which uh which again shocked me because his social skills with the mundanes are uh, they're not they're well, not so great um, yeah the thing is the thing that's interesting actually is when you, when you really look at bester though i mean he he really needles people all the time, but to an extent, he does have a huge amount of social intelligence to be able to. You know, it's like when he is being a jerk to people, it's it's deliberate to an extent. It's like he has great social skills, and they allow him to be as aggravating to like mundane as he can be like really warm to other okay. telepaths. Okay, you know, I if thought you think about, about that. it. That okay, way. that makes but, sense. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. <laughs> um, and I and I, I I don't know I just I just really liked uh, seeing this side of the character I liked seeing uh, sort of I don't know the, obviously we're gonna get the Babylon Five point of view as this story unfolds if if, if this becomes a, an important thread uh, you know then I, I expect we'll get the other point of view but uh, I think this is an important angle because it just really does make it a believable conflict it doesn't seem like oh Psychor evil terrible babylon five yeah. good right you know, there's 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 a little bit more subtlety involved it's a it's 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 a lot more subtle than the conflict in the previous seasons where you know there were there were really nefarious forces at work uh, uh helping the conflict along you know there's no no sympathy in our hearts for uh president clark um yeah you know but uh but the but you saw an actual change uh in the intern from the beginning of this episode to the end of the episode. I think that was the, like you said, that's one of the real important things that, uh, you know, she went from, 
I mean, and and also, I mean, uh, you know, her her fellow intern was murdered. It was it was uh, yeah. you know, that's like a uh, and 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 again, like you said, Zach didn't see like he had just talked to this guy. He was and, and it was just a kid. It would be like, like, can you imagine being that callous? Like, you know, you have a couple of college interns and one of them gets murdered and you're like, oh, what's the big deal? It's a college kid like that. that that's kind of how he reacted to the to the murder. Um, yeah, right? it's it's uh, so I don't know. It was he, he and also with Zach, you get the sense that he sort of realized that what he said was like, like there was recognition in Zach's eyes when they reacted. So I feel yeah. like Zach had just been in an environment where he was probably just joking about telepaths. And, you know, he just didn't realize, like, the impact of what he was <laughs> saying, maybe. But but still, it had an enormous, uh, you know, it had enormous consequences for this one character. So, uh, yeah, it's it's I mean, yeah, exactly. It's it's well, it's, you know, I mean, it's cop humor can be pretty callous on the whole. And he's talking to other cops, basically, but it was not the right time for it. <laughs> but uh yeah, that, that, no, I, I was I was really uh, impressed with this episode. It it, it really uh, really held together. I uh, and um, but yeah, I, it's it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, there was another thing in there too with Franklin. Franklin had a moment with Bester. That's where, right. Where yes. and that kind of highlight, like to me, that was the scene where I really kind of got all that stuff where. Franklin was genuinely surprised when she when she mentioned that Zach said that he doesn't like telepaths. The yeah. telepaths can't be trusted. And he's like, "Well, wait, how do you know that?" And she's like, "Oh, he said it. <laughs> like, he, no, he said the, those are the words he used." And, and 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 the look on Franklin's face, I felt really kind of it kind of told you what what they wanted you to think about the episode. Do you know what I mean like like that was sort of yeah. like like he, like he had a look of shock on his face. Um and I felt like, you know, Franklin was kind of the he was kind of like the moral center of the episode, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's get it's it's a moment where he is being, you know, pretty gracious to Bester to a large extent, but it's it's too little too late, you know. It's uh Bester's already on his path at this point, so But Bester does say you're an optimist. Thank you for reminding me of what that looks like. So I mean again, I think yeah. that that definitely shows us had he had he been reminded of optimists ten episodes ago or, th- or you know <laughs> 45 episodes ago maybe you know maybe uh he wouldn't be you know down the path that he's in. and i don't know where his path is going but obviously he's thinking in terms of a bigger conflict with mundanes and telepaths because he he says yeah. that to the interns at one point you know this is you know this is why the struggle between mundanes and telepaths will be no struggle at all because uh you know they, yeah they're easily tricked uh, well, of course, you know, they have the reveal that they've got all these ships that they're keeping out in hyperspace that no one else knows about. We, uh, you know, oh, a yeah, couple yeah, episodes that before the... we had the bombing. So it's like all all these these hints of the telepath war are just being being dropped right and left at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was, it was a good, it was a very I, I thought a really good episode. And, and again, if if it is that the telepaths and Psychor are going to become the big threat, I like that they gave us a window into what it is. And it wasn't just this vague sort of evil thing that you project. You know what I mean? You, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a more interesting conflict now because now I sort of know some of the people on the other side. And I haven't quite had that as much with the exception of guys like Morden and stuff. But like, you know, when, when they were at war with Clark, you didn't have any sense of you know, who Clark's number two was and, you know, you know, what a, what a typical, uh, person operating in his, uh, administration might've been, you know, in, in, with, we, we got a little bit more, uh, of a fleshed out enemy with this one. Um, yeah. and I think that's appropriate because Bester's a, 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 he's not just a threat. He's a character in the show. Clark was more of like a threat. Clark was this looming thing that, you know, you could put all these ideas on and he, was, he would embody these ideas. Bester is more of an actual personality. So, um, so it feels fitting. Yeah. Now Bester, I'm sorry, uh, Clark didn't need to really be more than he was cause he was, yeah. I mean, him being off stage kind of enhanced you know, his role in the show. I think we just got those tiny glimpses of him, but, but yeah, the, uh, no, it's, 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 I, I'm 
Yeah, you know, I'm pretty hazy on it. We we actually don't have very many episodes left here, do we? No, it's like got... ten left, I think. Yeah, and one nine, of them is the actually. finale, which I which my understanding is that's a little bit different than some of the other. Yeah. Shows. So yeah. So yeah, no, we're we're at the tail end of this. I'm I'm lo- I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm I'm enjoying season five, and I uh, I again I I got to say my favorite character in the show is Bester. Like that is hands down my favorite <laughs> character in the whole show. Um, and so I'm really yeah. pleased that we're getting, we're clearly getting Bester story here. Uh, you know, hopefully we get more. I don't know, but uh, and I don't know. I, I I can imagine some people probably get annoyed at Bester. He might be one of the, he might be he might have become like a Q type character that some people get when he shows up they get annoyed. But I really yeah, like I, him. I like him a lot. I, I've always, I always liked him on Star Trek, and it's nice seeing him in in this just this much bigger role. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he does does a great job with it. Yeah, I don't know that anyone got sick of Bester during the show. I mean, the the Q thing, I'm with you on, but I mean, he just he just belongs as part of the story. It's not like the, It's not like you really need to shoehorn him in all that much. And uh, well, and and Q could come out of left field. I think that was something that maybe bothered people about him. He and, and he was godlike, and Bester has power, but he's still a mortal man. So. Um, yeah oh exactly i mean yeah well you've got a guy who can do anything but he just you know he just wants to goof around with with you know with captain picard it just i don't know it's, there, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of genuine tension there for to keep building plots on but uh, uh, <laughs> but i don't know but I, but i'm i'm a big fan of bester i i uh it's it's it, it was. It, I was not at all expecting. I like. Like I said when we when he first showed up, I honestly thought that we weren't going to get. Like if we got Star Trek Big Bull, I figured it'd be like bit actors who played minor roles or were in makeup and you wouldn't recognize them. I didn't think we were going to get a, a a big Star <laughs> Trek name like that uh, in this yeah. franchise. Just based on what you had told me of the uh, the the history, uh, <laughs> and, and so uh, so that was nice. That was and and. Uh, and and I'm still holding out hope for a cameo, uh, you know, from someone else. We'll see if uh, if I get that. It's 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 diminishing with every episode. But uh, um, yeah, I, I don't recall there being any more Star Trek cameos. No. But uh, I could I could be surprised. Oh, no, no William Shatner uh, swooping in in the end. And... Well, we're definitely not getting any William Shatner. That's for sure. I don't know but... if Babylon Five could handle a Shatner cameo. I think that would be too much for the series um it's yeah that, that's that would not work <laughs> but uh, I mean, but all right i so, think i think 90s shatner is different enough from star trek era shatner anyway that it just wouldn't it, it's just I li- wrong i liked his cameo on um third rock from the sun i don't know if you remember that that was fantastic yeah. okay because, that... but but I, but I, but the thing about it that made it so great was they not only they tie it to that really old Twilight Zone episode that yes. was like fifty years ago, but they tied it to the one that um oh god what's his name the guy who played the lead character in the show his name is escaping me now uh jeez oh, I know I know you mean he, yeah well but he uh, yeah. played the same character in the in the in movie, the, the movie. So exactly was, it, the same thing happened to me yeah, yeah that was a, <laughs> that, was... that was one of the most uh, well placed cameos in a vaguely science fiction show i know it was more of a sitcom but uh yeah yeah but i don't think i don't think i but but I, but I think that was sort of the the gear shatner was in in the 90s and it might not have fit well for babylon 5 uh like you were yeah. saying um, yeah he's in a different place <laughs> so, all right so we will we will uh head out um and uh we'll be back on with uh i guess the next three episodes on wednesday right that is uh is that our uh schedule uh that works for me yeah so we've got we've got three more episodes left here well through all like three more podcasts left worth of episodes here so that's uh so we'll we'll be done uh, by next week this is uh, that's uh, right uh, (laughs) um, all right so so we got that um and on uh uh, let me see. On uh, Friday, we're going to be doing 14 Amazons, so we're sort of kicking off a, a month of, uh, of of women swordsmen, and and 14 Amazons is the lead. And it's a really classic movie. It's on Prime, so I would encourage people to check it out so that they can sort of follow along with the discussion. 
and we'll have some other things up during the week too. We're also going to do the 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 final episode of me and Kenny's read through of Return of Condor Heroes. I strongly recommend people check that out if they're not familiar with Condor Heroes because they might get a better sense of what it what what's so special about Return of Condor Heroes. And if you like Return of Condor Heroes, it's just an opportunity. Like I I know like three people that have any level of interest in 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 uh in 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 something like Return of Condor Heroes. And so I very rarely get a chance to just go on and talk about it at length. And so uh so you might find you might find it somewhat cathartic to hear people talking about it. Uh so anyways, we'll be back on and we will talk to you later.